So here we have the wizards page, which will guide you through the step-by-step -step setup of your system. If you don't get to this page automatically, you can always find it again at the top right-hand corner. Click the wizards option there and you'll find it. On the right-hand side are the four wizards applicable to the E1 Cozy hardware that I have here. So we're going to run through three of those to set it up. We can either do that individually selecting them on the right or through the quick launch wizard, which just takes us through all of them in order. So the first wizard we're going to look at is the system wizard. The system wizard allows us to set a name for our E1 and we can give it any name we, we wish, maybe better if we spell it correctly, um, so that you can identify this E1 when you're looking at them on the internet. You can change the administrator password here and we strongly advise that you do that with your systems when you're setting them up. The next page talks about the clock setup and we've got the ability to select the time zone that we're running in. And if you select this for a true location, rather than just simply picking a, a GMT or Central European time, then if you have any daylight saving changes, it will make those automatically. We offer a, a clock server, a time server within the talk to m cloud, so you can just link to that free of charge. The next option is how do you want your ports configured? On a Cozy, you will have four ports built into the system. And by default, one of those ports, the one in orange, is connected to the internet router. And the other three are LAN ports for connection to the local devices. You can change this and you can have alternative setups. You can have all four ports set to local devices. If you have a, a version which has got um, a Wi-Fi or a, a modem card in it, or you can leave one port as the WAN, which I will do for default here. So that will now check the system, change the ID and system name, and we've got success. And the button at the bottom here, next wizard, takes me on to the next configuration. OK, so the next thing we want to do is to connect to our Cozy to the Internet. So we have the option here for the Internet connection. And as I mentioned, the model I have connected today has got the Wi-Fi option as well as the uh, hard cabled connection to my router. So we have those two alternatives. But I'm going to start with the Ethernet connection to show you how that works. If I had a version which had a, a modem in it with the SIM card, then I'd have the ability to set up a triggered connection here whereby we could send an SMS message to the E1 in order to wake it up. That's a, a good option if you need to save on your data contract. But for an Ethernet connection, we make this as a permanent connection. OK, so the router that I'm connected to has got a DHCP server in it. But if it didn't have, I would have the ability to make a change and so set a static IP address for my Cozy together with a default gateway and also to declare where the DNS server is going to be found. But all of that is handled by my router, so I'm just going to leave it as the DHCP option here. So the next thing that we have the option of is whether we want to run a test through my internet connection. Now, if we're working with a proxy server, this connection test won't work, so we can disable it at this point. But I've just got a simple connection through to my home router, and uh, the, the system will now run through and uh, test the connection out onto the internet, and make sure that we can reach the talk to m cloud. So that's what it's checking through now. And just to show you that things don't always run to plan, we've got a problem here. So my E1 Cozy is unable to establish a WAN connection. We don't leave you in the dark. You can go and have a look at the events log page and see what the problem is. OK, so we have here a list of events that have, have happened and the most recent at the top. And we can see here that the problem is that we're not getting a DHCP address, an IP address from my router. Well, that could be that my router doesn't have a DHCP server, but in this case, it's a little bit easier. I forgot to plug the cable in. So let me replug the cable from my router to my Cozy and then I can go back to my wizards and run the Internet wizard again using the same options for DHCP, testing for the internet connection. And now when we run through the connection, hopefully it will get an IP address from my router and we'll have a green thumbs up to say we've connected to the internet. OK, so that's just check that we can reach the internet. The next thing that we need to, to check is whether we want to run the talk to M. Oh, 
a moment here. Because I reran my internet connection, I've been given this option for a secondary WAN interface. I'll explain what that means later in the presentation. So we'll just click no on that for the time being. OK, as I was saying, because I had to run that internet a second time, it dropped me out of the quick launch wizard. If it had worked the first time, it would have automatically taken me to the talk to M wizard. But I can start that again at any time. OK, right. So now what we need to do is to register with our activation key. So if we hadn't already got this running in the background, we needed to go back to our eCatcher. So I will quickly launch eCatcher again. OK, so here's our eCatcher account with my cosy and I can now go and retrieve that activation code again. So from the, the main page of E1s, I select the E1 that I want to link, select properties, talk to M connectivity, and I can copy that activation key to the clipboard. And then if I return to my E1 configuration page, the activation key can be pasted in there. And then click next to move on. So this will link this E1 to that E1 that I have created in my eCatcher account. Again, this is here where we can select whether we want to connect via proxy. I'm just going directly, so it's not a, an option. And the advanced parameters here is where we can force the connection to be TCP rather than UDP. So next now takes us onto the test and checking again our WAN connection. And this time it's going to make the WAN connection up to the talk to M cloud and make the link to my E1 in the cloud. And there we've got a correct configuration. It's successfully read the talk to M configuration, tested the VPN, and we've got our green thumbs up. So all is well. If the read talk to M configuration failed, there may be one or two reasons for that. Obviously, you might have miscopied the activation key. But the other possibility is if, if this unit is not a brand new unit, it may have been previously connected to another talk to M account. If that is the case, then the fastest solution is to delete it from the first account before you add it to your new account. Once you've done that, you can use the activation key from the new account to make the connection. But all worked fine, so I can finish. Completed all the wizards, so now we can go back to our summary page and see what the setup is. So our internet connection has succeeded and we have our primary connection via the internet, uh, ethernet through to my router. We can see the E1 types there. As I said, we have a Wi-Fi modem and we're connected to the talk to m cloud. The VPN has been connected for one minute and 21 seconds. So all is correct and we have a connected E1 cosy up to my talk to m account.